Nuclear fusion is the most promising energy source in the universe. From massive stars spanning all of space to tiny reactors here on Earth. At the moment, three main strategies are being researched. And all three are getting closer and closer to the break-even point, which is the goal of all energy production. However, although many businesses make unbelievable claims, commercial fusion is likely to take a while. What obstacles are there to the development of nuclear fusion? Is there a way to avoid them, or would they mark the end of nuclear fusion? Join us as we uncover the surprising issue that could end nuclear fusion. Physics give us various options when it comes to producing power and energy. The energy of an object's motion can be absorbed using fundamental mechanics, such as turning a wheel or turbine with weight subject to gravity, flowing water, or moving air. The motion is then used to generate power, whether electrical or otherwise. Chemical reactions rely on electron transitions in the bonds that keep atoms and molecules together. Fuel is broken down or burned in these processes to produce energy, which is subsequently captured and utilized similarly. Finally, nuclear reactions occur when the bonds that hold neutrons and protons together within an atomic nucleus are either severed or strengthened, producing energy that is subsequently used. On the other hand, nuclear energy is unique regarding the percentage of mass converted into energy. It outperforms all chemical reactions by hundreds of thousands to millions of times. It may seem strange to believe that the atomic nucleus, a tiny matter component, has the most extraordinary power to release energy, but it is true. Since nuclear fission and fusion can experience runaway reactions that continue to produce energy for as long as the reactions can last, they both have applications besides creating atomic weapons. For nuclear fission to occur, a neutron or other particle is frequently absorbed by an unstable nucleus. For instance, when uranium-235 absorbs a neutron, the nucleus splits apart, releasing additional neutrons and beginning a chain reaction. Suppose the reaction rate can be controlled by absorbing neutrons and creating conditions that limit their speed. In that case, it can be used for controlled power generation. However, if the reaction rate is uncontrolled, you will get a bomb. Contrarily, fusion can release much more energy than fission. The primary reaction driving our sun occurs in all stars with core temperatures above 4 million Kelvin. Fusion bombs produce significantly more power than fission bombs. Nuclear fusion can potentially displace all other energy production methods as the primary electricity source on Earth. Nuclear fusion reactions are currently managed if they can be controlled with the same efficiency. When it comes to the energy and power sources that we must consider, there are now three significant issues to consider. Availability, when we need more energy, we want to access it. And when we need less, we don't want to waste it. We want this energy to be available when we need it. And we have greater flexibility if we manage to supply as we do with fossil fuels or hydroelectric dams with dependable regular water flow than if we rely solely on erratic resources like solar and wind. Wind and solar power are universal for human needs on Earth since the winds and the sun will always exist. On the other hand, fossil fuels will not since the Earth's supply of coal, oil, and natural gas is limited. Despite being a more abundant resource than fossil fuels, nuclear fission is still a finite resource. However, the higher the quantity of uranium compared to other fissile elements we use, the more difficult it will be to discover new, uncontaminated sources due to mining and processing needs. When we burn fossil fuels, we emit pollutants into the atmosphere that impact the environment. Radioactive byproducts are generated during nuclear fission reactions. Some of these byproducts have short half-lives, whereas others will be around for many generations. Our species' energy consumption has had a significant impact on the climate of Earth since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, and this problem only worsens with time. These three reasons demonstrate that nuclear fusion power is the best type of renewable energy. If we can control the fusion reaction rate, we can generate energy on demand with no waste. Nuclear fusion is the most sustainable energy choice. All of this, of course, is predicated on the supposition that we as species can attain the break-even point for nuclear fusion, which we still need to do. 
The ultimate energy goal is to achieve a self-sustaining nuclear fusion process that generates more helpful energy from its reactions than what was necessary to start the fusion reactions in the first place. This problem is challenging for two reasons. First, starting a nuclear fusion process is challenging when working only with stable light elements in isotopes like hydrogen, deuterium, helium-3. To initiate a nuclear fusion reaction, extremely high temperatures and energies are required. It can be challenging to maintain and control these environments. It takes a lot of energy to establish the prerequisites for fusion even at first. Secondly, you can't just approach this with the intention of using fusion to generate more energy than you put into the system to start the reaction. It would be a bomb. Instead, it would help if you created energy at the phase that would allow you to use it to generate appropriate amounts of power over time. To start your reactions and produce more energy than you put into the system and extract and use that energy, you must reach the fabled break-even point. There are three main tactics the researchers are employing to attempt to alter how people fundamentally interact with energy at the fabled break-even point. Still, both issues still need to be fully resolved together. Fusion using magnetic confinement is the first strategy. Remember that the fuel for nuclear fusion is composed of atomic nuclei rather than simple atoms. Atoms can be ionized by losing all their electrons until just their atomic nuclei are left, which is one method of achieving nuclear fusion. The goal is to bring these atomic nuclei together, defeating the electrically repelling force between them, to produce this superheated plasma of atomic nuclei that can fuse, which will trigger fusion reactions. The most cost-effective method in this case has been to use strong electromagnets to contain the superheated plasma, bringing the atomic nuclei together inside a cavity known as tokamak. For decades, tokamak has been the subject of research and has continuously generated fusion reactions inside of it. The main challenges with this method are collecting the energy from the reaction to produce usable power and keeping the plasma contained. Otherwise, it collides with the device's walls. This strategy has long been considered the most viable path toward nuclear fusion. Still, it has only received a pittance of financing compared to the proverbial moonshot levels required to have a real chance of long-term success. Fusion using inertial confinement is the second strategy. Why not just use raw force rather than fiddle with magnetic fields? Inertial confinement fusion aims to achieve it. Powerful lasers are used to repeatedly shoot a target pellet made of fusion-capable material to quickly raise its temperature and density until a nuclear fusion reaction can be sparked. It's feasible that the fusion reaction will release even more energy, allowing us to surpass the break-even point someday. However, it involves saving a significant power for the laser shot that compresses the pellet. Like magnetic confinement fusion, this strategy has been in use for years and has continuously produced fusion reactions. Still, the same two issues persist, notwithstanding recent developments that have brought us closer to the ultimate break-even point. Although we can produce ever-increasing amounts of energy with this technique, we must first store a sizable portion of power in several capacitor banks before unleashing it all at once. We only experience a single flash of reaction before attempting to collect and channel the energy release. Even though we are moving closer to the end objective, we are still far from the break-even point. Because financing is scant compared to the hundreds of billions of dollars that should be invested in this technology, development is still progressing slowly. Third-way approaches are the third strategy many private enterprises are involved in. Some are unquestionably charlatans, while others are legitimate suspicious or both. There are two primary alternatives to conventional procedures, both of which can produce fusion reactions. Starting fusion isn't all that challenging, but getting us near the break-even threshold as inertial confinement or magnetic confinement fusion is tricky. Despite numerous new competitors in this industry, this strategy is now the furthest from the break-even point of all comparable procedures. As with other initiatives on the fringes of mainstream science, Actual academics are working on the technology underlying these illusions. But there is also a lot of wishful thinking and a lot of promises that are highly unlikely to come true. Some participants in the game employ techniques similar to Solyndra's. They're doing basic research while betting on an unlikely road to success. Some people resemble Theranos, 
but the technologies they intend to employ still need to be created. Simply put, the field of nuclear fusion is a jungle. Nuclear fusion is the universe's most life-giving and life-sustaining reaction. It is essential to all stars, as well as the countless brown dwarfs and failed stars that undergo deuterium fusion throughout their lives. When light elements mix, a new element with a lower mass than the original reactants is formed. The energy released by this fusion reaction is proportional to the mass difference between the new element and the original reactants. In terms of energy availability, fuel source accessibility, and environmental effects, nuclear fusion is the finest option among all available power generation technologies. It provides the best opportunity to mitigate the current energy and environmental catastrophe. Still, until these issues are resolved, it isn't today's technology and isn't likely to be of tomorrow. That is our video for today. We hope you like it. So, can we really see the end of nuclear fusion? Share all of your thoughts with us in the comments section below. Well, that's all for now. This is Big Tech Media. See you again tomorrow. Keep in mind to like, share, and subscribe.